So hello everyone. Uh, today I will introduce you, as Laura and Xavi already presented, a statistical software program that helps us efficiently manipulate and analyze data. And we will go over how this program works. And I also will discuss some statistical concepts that are essential for the data analysis. And uh, at some point, like at the end of the session, I will also suggest some exercises using the HIV data set that we uh, shared or circulated. And also, uh, it, at that point, it will be recommended that you already have the program installed uh, by following the steps. Uh, in the manu manual, we also circulate it via email. So uh, what is Jamovi? Uh, Jamovi is a free and open source statistical software that uh, designed it to be user-friendly and accessible for people without extensive programming, programming skills. And it was developed as a response to the growing need for software that is both intuitive and powerful for a statistical analysis. And it is built on top of the R statistical language, which is a popular a statistical program, but providing a graphical user interface that allows uh, people to perform a wide range of analysis without needing to write code because our, it's, uh, it's a statistical package that, that is based on progr programming. And Jamovi is particularly um, popular in academia and research because of its use, ability to integrate, are with more advanced analysis, and it has a wide range of statistical tools. And it's also designed to be community driven. So uh, the uh, people can uh, introduce or compute uh, their, their functions and incorporate into the program. So uh, there is like um, the, the basic uh, analysis things, but there are many additional modules available through the built-in Jamovi library. So extending the capability beyond the default options uh, when you first installed it. Uh, so installing Jamovi is a straightforward if you have not done it yet. Uh, and, and it's available for multiple platforms, including Windows, Macintosh, and, and Linux. Here you have like the steps that you can, you can also find it in the manual that we circulated. So you just have to go to the, to, to the website and it's a straightforward to navigate through it and download to the load section. And, and, and it's like a double clicking. Okay, just, so let's start. Yeah, Sorry, just yeah, just one moment, just to remember you that for those who don't have received the file or something, uh, there is also on the on the chat. Uh, Shabi has shared the the Jamobi file, this manual, and also the the files uh, for the exercises at the end of the. So you have everything in the in the chat. Okay. Okay, exactly. So this same slide here, it's it's written down in the manual. So if you can, if you want to check it now. So uh, it, when you install, this is how you yeah how we see this is the main interface of Jamovi. As I said before, one of the strengths of Jamovi is simplicity and accessibility. So for users that do are not familiar for coding or with coding or programming. And as you see, you can see the layout is very similar to the popular spreadsheet programs like Excel. So on the left hand side, we have the data view where uh, we can easily enter and manage our data set. Columns represents as in Excel, 
would represent uh, variables, while rows uh, would represent individual cases or observations. And on the right-hand side, we have the results panel, which will dynamically update as we perform analysis, as we will see. At the top, we have the ribbon toolbar with different tabs to access various statistical tests, graphs, and additional options. And this design makes the navigating through the different features of Jamovi straightforward, allowing us to quickly find uh, what we need. Um, first of all, tell you that the program is usually installed in the language of the operating system. However, you can change the interface language uh, after installation through, through these three dots. And, and then you will see this, this window and you can change the language into the, the language. The, there are available, some available languages, not, not all of the languages, of course. And um, so the main uh, uh, window, the, the data tab is essentially, this uh, data tab is essentially for managing data sets within Jamovi. And these tabs provide several tools to import, organize and transform your data. So, for example, we have uh, no, the, the first option, it's uh, the import option, which will allow us to easily bring data from various formats, such as uh, CSV or Excel file. Actually, Jamovi can handle data from many different sources. So just have to click here and you will see the options to import data. So then, the import process is straightforward and you just have to select the file and Jamovi will automatically read the file and display the data set in the main window. Here is the example that we also, we already worked with um, uh, the other day when we were uh, using the Excel program. So as you see, the data is arranged always when we analyze data Usually the, the format of the data should be like, as we said the other day, columns, variables, rows, observations. And then we also have next to the data tab, the variable tab that allow us to, to manage and modify the characteristics of the variables in our data set. So you click into the variables, you, you actually see what uh, the, the variables that you are using in your data set with the name that it's displayed in the, in the data set. And also you could enter a description of each variable if needed here, right? And so in this example, uh, we have three variables, the sex, the weight, and the height of uh, some individuals. And Jamovi automatically detects the data type of each variable. See, so, so uh, uh, if you go into the edit button within the vari uh, variables tab, you will see, you will see this, this window here in the bottom. So as you can see here, by default, the program understands what type of uh, variable you, 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 are, um, um, you have in your data set. For example, the sex, which is a cat categorical or nominal variables, because it has two, two levels, males and females, we can confirm or adjust the settings. See, if you, if you go click into the, into the variable, you will see here that you are actually seeing the, the type of variable sex and the program has automatically detected this variable as nominal. You could, if you click here on top of nominal, you will see that the different options. So if that is not the case, the program has not identified correctly what type of variable you could, you could just drag in here and, and, and select the option uh, that it's correct. 
So for example, for the weight and height variables, both variables here are continuous variable, uh, continuous numeric variables, right? So, so the programs, <coughs> see, if you, if you go to, into the edit and you have clicked, for example, weight in this case, you automatically see this window that is showing the name of the variable and what measure type it, it is uh, settled. And it's here it is, it has been settled as continuous, which is the correct um, measure type. But again, if if it, it is not, you could you could change the type here. So it is important this uh, to identify when we have our variables, what type of variables. If we have a categorical or a numerical variable, because whether the variable is categorical or numerical, we proceed with a, with a specific analysis, one analysis or another, which we will see later on in this seminar. OK. Uh, what we can do, what we can also do, um, we can create new variables uh, based on existing ones. So how do we do this? Through this button, Compute. Right? So we click on Compute, and we create new variables. So this will open a window where you can specify the formula for the new variable, for example. In this case, in this toy example, uh, we'll name a new variable VMI, where the body mass index. So, so when we when we click on here, we will say, okay, I, I want to create a new variable. This new variable, then here in the formula box, you have to introduce the the formula actually of the new variable. So, so here is the height, the weight divided by the height in meters squared, right? So, if if you write down the formula, you will automatically see in the data tab, the new variable that has been added, right? So this is very similar to the Excel program, <coughs> but uh, in this case, we can also um, do more uh, additional uh, st statistical analysis. Um, we can create new variables also based on logical condition in this case, for example, I have categorized individuals based on their BMI values. So we want to split them into two groups. Those with, for example, a BMI uh, of 25 or more, and those with a BMI below 25. So how do we do this? Again, we click on the compute. We then see this window here. We have to uh, to write down uh, what will be the name of our new variable, and then uh, put the logical function here into the formula box, like like before. And similarly, uh, how we we were working with Excel the other day, right? So uh, at the end, if an individual is uh, has a BMI of twenty five or greater, the condition will evaluate to true, as you see here. And if it's less than 25, the condition will evaluate to false, if as we see here. So we have computed two different variables. And if you see here in the name of the, of the new variables, do you, you see a symbol next to it. And this symbol, indicates what type of variable the program has identified these uh, variables as to be. For example, the BMI, uh, uh, this symbol, it, it indicates that uh, this variable is of type numeric continuous. And this symbol indicates that this variable is of type categorical, which actually it's correct uh, as how the nature or how we have been created these variables. Okay, so uh, this is like a, a quick, a quick view of how you can manipulate the database and uh, format the data and compute other variables. 
And now we will move to the, to the analysis. So the analysis tab is a crucial component of Jamobi where we can perform various statistical analysis and generate results. So in this tab, we have access to a wide range of statistical tests. And once we select the type of analysis we wish to perform, we can easily specify the variables we want to include. And Jamobi provides a user-friendly interface that allows us to drag and drop the variables into the, into the analysis box, but that we, I, will, I will show you uh, later on. Make it intuitive. And, and after running the analysis, the results are displayed in a, in a clear and organized manner, as you will see. So for example, let's, let's conduct a descriptive analysis of a numerical variable. So descriptive statistics, uh, as you may uh, know, they summarize and provide uh, insight into our data, helping to understand its main characteristics. So useful descriptive statistics for numerical variables include the mean, that represents the average value of the variable in our data set, giving like the central tendency measure. The median, which is the middle value when values are ordered, which can be specifically used when there are outliers that may skew the mean. And also like the standard deviation that measures the dispersion or variability of the variable's values around the mean. So a higher standard deviation indicates that the values are spread out over the, a, wider, a wider range. So this would be like for, for uh, descriptive measures for this type of variables. And, and in this case, for example, if we keep working with the BMI variable, which actually is numerical, is continuous, how can we describe this variable using these metrics into the Jamobi? So we just have to, in, in the analysis tab, click on the um, explore button, which will open a window here. This, uh, if you click at this button, uh, you will open a window where we can select the variables that we want to analyze. For example, you, you will see all the variables, so you just have, just have to drag into your, into your right the variable that you want to analyze here. We are interested in the BMI, so we will drag this variable here, as you see in the next uh, window. Uh, automatically, automatically in the results window, you will see the uh, this um, few uh, statistics measures that we were saying. No, we have a total of 100 rows here, 100 individuals. The mean value here of the BMI is 24.8 and the median is 25.1. So um, that standard deviation, these, these are measures of the central. See, see when the mean and the median, they are similar, this is an indication that the distribution of this variable is very symmetrical. So when the distribution is skewed, these two measures that are um, central measures are, uh, uh, are far away each from uh, one from each, uh, the other one. Okay. And the standard deviation would be like how, how the values are spread around the, the mean. So here it's 2.88. 2 and by default, the program also provides the minimum, minimum and the maximum values. So just uh, analyzing, doing a descriptive analysis, it's straightforward using this program. <laughs> Uh, in the explore window, um, we can expand the uh, statistics option. So, so when uh, I was showing you that, uh, no, we drag onto your our into the right hand right hand side panel the variable that we want to analyze. 
below this, you can if uh, you can uh, click on the statistics. And this option allows us to select additional statistics that may, may be of interest for our analysis. By default, the program uh, sets this that are the most popular, but we want to see if we want to see how the distribution of the variable is uh, the pattern of the distribution, if there is some skewness or not, you have other metrics if, if you know other statistical metrics that may be of your interest. Also, uh, in this panel, you have the plots option. So uh, by clicking here, we can create graphical representations. And here we have the opportunity to generate different types of plots that can enhance our understanding of the data for numerical variables. And like BMI, the most suitable options are histograms and box plots. So here are like different different plots that you can you can pro, um, compute. So um, uh, uh, histograms provide a visual representation of the distribution of the data. So we can see the frequency of BMI values, for example, across different ranges, like you, like you see here. You know, like uh, you can see that uh, most of, of the people here have uh, values around 25. And if you move towards the left of, of the distribution of the right of the distribution, you see less um, values. But we have the other uh, graph that maybe uh, it's, it's not that well known uh, if, if you're not in the, um, in the area, but actually box plots have gained popularity because they allow us to comment on many characteristics of the data distribution in a, in a single visual. So what do we see in a box, in a box plot? Um, the, we, we see like a, a, a box and this box, the bottom, part of the box represents the first quartile. And the first quartile is the value that separates the lowest 25% of the data from the rest. Uh, so it indicates the point below which 25% of the BMI values fall, okay? So the top, symmetrically to the top of the box, uh, this represents the third quartile, which means that it's a value that separates the highest 25%, highest 25% of the data from the lower 75% of the data. So this means that 25% of the data, uh, the 25% the, the of the VMI, VMA values, uh, fall below this point, uh, 27 in this data set, right? Then we see like the line inside the box. The line inside the box indicates the median, which is the middle value of the data set, providing a measure of, of central tendency. And then we have the whiskers. So the median value, so, sorry, it's around 26, we will say here. So the whiskers extends uh, from the box to the minimum, so uh, to the minimum value, when the minimum value here would be around 18 or something like that, and maximum values of the data. So this gives us a visual representation of the range of the data, of the total range of the data. So the, whisker, the whiskers helps to indicate the spread of, of, also of the data. Uh, so values outside the um, see if there were values outside the whiskers that we do not see this in this case, this would be indication of values, anomalous values. If, if we had someone with a BMI of, of 
uh, let's say 50, it would mean it will it would be represented as a dot here, and it would be an indication of anomalous value of a person within the or in comparison to the rest of the values of this of of the people in this data set. Okay, this is the interpretation of the box plot, which I wanted to give it a, a detail because it's for numerical variables, it's 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 very useful. Uh, another thing that we can do easily, and it is also very helpful uh, within the analysis and representation of continuous data, is uh, the representation of of the date this data, but split it between key key groups no for example here we we can visualize the bmi information separately by categories such as such as sex in here so what do we do if you uh if in this same window so you see a box here that says splits by so you can drag the sex uh, variable uh, towards here and automatically the result window will, will refresh, will update <laughs> the results. And what we see here is the, the last uh, uh, analysis that we were performing, the plots, the histograms and the, and the box plots and, uh, separated, but each category of the variable sex. So what does this um, splitting analysis uh, does or allows us to, to, to see? For example, here we, we will say, we'll take a look at the, uh, at the box plots. We, we would see that in, in mean, the females in this data set have uh, like um, higher values than males. But as well, we see that the spread of the values of the BMI values of the females here is larger than the spread values of the, of the males here. Also, what I didn't say before is that um, the, the box plots uh, allow us to, as well as the histograms, to see whether the distribution is symmetrical or not. This is important in statistics because if we, if we do a stream down analysis, like inference or something like this, tested uh, are depend, are, uh, some statistical tests depend on the, of the symmetry of the data or not. So for descriptive analysis, it's just to see uh, the, how the distribution is, but for tests uh, uh, also it's important because um, the suitability of the election of a specific test. So how do we see in, in box plots if we have a, a symmetrical distribution or no? Just, just have to take a look at the, at the median, at the middle line of the box and, uh, and and uh, if the distribution is, is uh, symmetric, we would see a distance from the minimum to the median here, the, the lower uh, distance equal to the higher listen, distance, the median through the highest value, right? So here, for example, it's a little bit skewed uh, toward the lower, lower values. And in the case of males, it's a little bit skewed toward the higher values. Okay, um, now uh, let's, uh, if you have any question, do not hesitate to stop me or, or uh, at any point. If not, I move forward. So now we can focus to the analysis of categorical variables. So categorical variables represent distinct groups or categories or categories rather than numerical values. So when analyzing a categorical variable, we typically look at frequencies 
that is as how many observations fall into one category or proportions or percentages of the total that each category represents, right? So, uh, as you as you see, as you can see here, if uh, we want to analyze a, a categorical variable, it's very straightforward and very simple. Again, we are in the explore uh, window. We have uh, our variables in our data set. Which which categorical variable we want and we want to analyze uh, here the example that I have uh, that it's uh, uh, that I've selected to illustrate how this works is the uh, categorization of the BMI that the we we were seeing before right so we put it into the, the right hand side of the window and you will see here. A, an option of frequency tables. If you click here, you will actually see on the results window, the table of the frequencies, counts and percentages. Also, you will see a cumulative percentage, which is the, it only works for ordinal data, for nominal um, categorical data, but has some sense of order. Here we, we it's not uh, applicable, uh, advisable here. So we will only see at these two types of information. Actually, uh, we have to know um, that we are working with a categorical data. So we, if we have clicked in some of the measures or the statistical measures here, like the mean, more um, uh, skewness or whatever, we should unclick it because, of course, these are not uh, measures uh, for this type of, of variables. Okay, so just analyzing a categorical variable with 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 Jamobi is, as you can see, it's uh, is straightforward. Um, sorry. Um, Another, yes, another type of analysis in the context of categorical variables is the cross tabulation or contingency tables. So this analysis is useful for analyzing how two categorical variables relate to each other. So we can uh, identify the distribution of ca one categorical variable across the category categories of another variable or determine if there is an association between the two variables. So for example, in our ongoing example, I want to see whether the categorical categorized BMI is associated with, uh, uh, with the sex. So what do we do? Uh, we select here in the analysis tab. Now we, we leave the exploration button and we, want, we will explore another button, very useful, the frequency button. And here the frequencies options, and uh, you will see different options. And one is the contingency table. And here you have like independent samples of pair samples. So we will want to compare the BMI between a group of males and a group of females. And so, so we would use this, um, the independent samples. Okay, so if we do this, we, we end up as with this particular window that we have already seen. It is it's, it's very similar to the windows that we were seeing before. And uh, what we have to do is to drag the variables that we are interested in to analyze uh, in the specific boxes here. So for example, we drag the sex variables, variable into, into, the, into the rows. So a cross, a cross table is a table that crosses information of two variables, right? So we will settle one variable into the uh, row and the other variables into the columns. So we drag the sex variables into the row sections and the categorized BMI variable into, into the columns. 
as you see here. Uh, and also uh, here in this window at the bottom, you see the cell options. That means what information do I want to include in each cell of this cross table? As you see here, we are crossing the uh, sex variable um, via, in front of the BMI categorized variable. So here, if you see, you have different options to show. Uh, this option is like a, man a mandatory option, which is the observe, observe counts. It's the, the values that you see here, we see, see well, for example, we have like 21 females of um, BMIs uh, lower than uh, 25, right? 22 males of BMIs higher than 25. Uh, and also I have clicked here, you have the options to incorporate into the cells percentages, but different types of percentages. For example, I've clicked here, row percentages. Um, this choice, uh, will allow us to see the percentage distribution of each BMI category within each sex group. So by doing this, we can easily compare how the BMI distribution varies between males and females. Okay. So here, what do we what we do? We see we see a. Uh, within the females group, 85, 80, 58% are uh, over 25 and 42% uh, below 25. Okay, so uh, to assess uh, one of the of the of the points or the uh, the objectives of this type of analysis is to assess where there is an association within the, within the BMI categories and the sex. So how, how do we see this? In here it is very clear, but in the ex exercise that I will propose later on, it is not that clear. So to assess whether there is an association within the BMI categories and the sex, we need to compare the marginal or total percentages of BMA, BMI with the row percentage for each sex. So the total percentage is here. So, so if we, this information, a total percentage here represents the overall proportion of each BMI category across the entire data set. So 51%, it's, it's um, uh, over 25, for example. Uh, in contrast, the raw percentage indicate, indicates the proportion within the specific age groups, uh, sex groups, sorry. If we observe that the raw percentage, for example, of a high BMI category among women is significantly higher than the marginal or the total percentage of high BMI categories, this suggests a potential association between higher BMI and being a female, as we see here. It was, you see, and in contrast, for example, the, um, the percentage of higher BMIs in, in the group of males is lower than the marginal. So this is an indication of how uh, these two variables are associated. This is the association that we see in our data set. Of course, then if, if if any of, of, of you have taken like uh, more advanced statisticals, statistics, and uh, then you may see if this, is this association statistically significant, then we would need a, the inference test that we have here on the bottom side, but I will not, not go deeper into this, but that for those that know a little bit more of statistics, you see that you can have the inference test to see whether this significant this difference is significant or not in the population from where these uh, people come from. 
Okay, and uh, finally, in the analysis of categorical variables, we can also uh, make uh, representations. We can also represent very easily this information that we were seeing in a tabular way uh, uh, using graphs. So we can represent the conditional percentages by rows or by sex in this example, using the side by side um, bar chart, displaying the, the plot option of contingency tables. So as you see here, you display here, you can you can click on the oh, on the bar plot, which is for uh, uh, I didn't say this, but for categorical variables, as we were saying, for for numerical variables, we have histograms and we have box plots. For categorical variables, we have uh, mainly bar plots, also pie charts. Uh, uh, and here, very easily, you can perform a bar plot, uh, but but uh, using the two variables, uh, uh, all together into a single side by side plot. See, so as we see here, within the females, we have higher, um, higher, higher BMIs than lower BMIs. Uh, in contrast to males, we have higher lower BMIs in this in this example data set. Okay. And also just one uh, more thing that I wanted to say before moving uh, towards an, a specific example is uh, that just like in Excel, we can also filter rows of a data set in Jamovi to analyze only a selected subset of the data. So how do we do this? So, so, so moving, uh, using the same example. All right, now imagine that we want to describe the BMI, but just for the group of females. So just like in, in Excel, we can filter, filter uh, rows, right? So as you see here, if you click on the, the if you are within the data um, panel, there is the filter uh, button that if you click this, automatically you will see these boxes and you can uh, fix here or indicate here into the formula box uh, what is the condition that you should see in your data in order to uh, keep the rows. So here, for example, if we just want to analyze uh, uh, the females, we will set sex equals equals to females, and you will see a another column that will tell you which rows are selected and which rows are not selected. Here, as you can see, we we have we are selecting the females and 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 the males. Uh, we are not interested in males for this analysis, for example. If you do not anything, uh, given that that just before. So I, if I move go to the previous slide where we were um, we 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 conducted this analysis where we were analyzing the BMI uh, using the two uh, groups of 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 sex in here and the results window if you do not do anything will automatically refresh. This is a uh, an interesting feature also of Jamovi that 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 um, uh, updates uh, automatically. So the 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 previous the previous graph that we had now has updated to the graph conditioned to the subset of rows that we are considering here. Okay. So um, at this point. I think I have explained <laughs> a little bit uh, more or less what I wanted to explain about how to analyze uh, numerical and categorical variables. So I propose now to do an exercise. And um, uh, I propose this exercise 
to manipulate a little bit what I have just shown uh, within the context of our example data test, uh, data set of, of, of the HIV uh, test from the, well, remember that this, this uh, data, this CSV data, it's a subset of data that um, the export data that you have from the Covatebs website. And and one well, we want to to play a little bit with. So um, what uh, what can we do here uh, to see whether all what or just practice a little bit with what I have just explained? It's um, uh, import this data into Jamovi. So of, of course, for this, it, it would be it would be interesting interesting if you have the Jamovi already in, installed. Okay, so import the data, and we will create a new variable. That actually we we also created this variable within the context of Excel, and then we will do a, a, a an analysis of this variable. So the app here is to create the MSM variable. So following the steps that we also were following the other day, like for example, for key, to create the MSM following the, um, the, uh, the indications that uh, Covatest uh, says to create this variable. So we have, we consider an MSM. So uh, uh, a client that has uh, this, these two conditions, is a says gender men or transgender men, and also uh, has been has reported to have sexual relations with cisgender or men or transgender men. Okay, so if if a client um, follows these two conditions, we will uh, uh, indicate that uh, it's an MSM uh, client. Okay, and after this, uh, once we create this, my one we want to see whether there is an association of our clients, no, if there is an association of, of the people that come to uh, um, our site, uh, whether uh, there is an association of being an MSM and taking an HIV test. Okay. So uh, at this point, if you want, I can, I can wait, I can wait some minutes. So if you, of those of you that need to finish in, uh, installing the program and start thinking or, on, on how to deal with this. You can have some minutes. And also if you have some questions. So far.
Okay, if uh, you want, I can I can start with a um, with a solution of the exercise. So um, I will open Jamovi. So the first thing is um, to, of course, open Jamovi. And as we said, you know, this is how the, the main interface, you see when you do not have anything yet. Uh, so we want to first import the, the data. So we can go to special import. So uh, here I can say where I do I want to, sorry, I, I did not see. I'm going to see with the recording. Okay. Special import, and I browse. I, I have to go to the path here. I, I go to the path. I have my data here in webinar, and uh, the data is HIV slash test slash webinar. So if I open this, you will automatically see the data. Here I have, uh, if, if, if you see when I open it, the, the three variables, empty variables were kept. I can, I can delete them. For example, if, if you don't want to, you can delete them. Go into, into variables, you have clicked the three variables here, and we will delete the clicked columns. Okay. So now I have my clean data set. One thing I want to I will I want to mention here before we move on with the exercise is uh, that we can see the types of variables that we that the, the program has has automatically uh, assigned it. As we see, uh, for example, the first one, we click here, sorry. If we go into the edit, you can see what uh what type of 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 measure has this, the program assigned it to the specific column here it has assigned it a continuous measure it's an indicator random indicator that I that I set up for this data data set but for example for gender and other other variables like um, uh, this with men cis with men trans etc if you see the rest of the variables, the, the program has found them to be a nominal, okay? So uh, in this case, it, it's, it's, it's correct. We do not have to, to change, but if, if we thought, I don't know, gender to be uh, another type of measure, we could change it here. One other thing that you see here is the dates variables. If you see the data, the, the dates, date of visit and date of birth are date variables. This type of variables by default that are dates, uh, dates formats by default, the program does not identify. And actually it does not have a, a, the option, the Jamovi to specify them as dates formats as we saw, for example, that Excel could do. Uh, what we can do in these cases, if we, we, can, we, we can use more advanced um, uh, solutions that if I have, time, I have time, I will explain at the end of the, of the session. But uh, with this type of, of problems here, Usually, what I what we can do is let's form. Um, if we want to create, for example, the variable age, 
So we cannot create a variable h directly here because uh, if, if we do the difference between the date of the visit and the date of the birth, since this, this, those two variables are not uh, numerical variables, we cannot automatically compute these variables. So we can uh, do this outside, like manipulate data. And uh, when it comes to the time to analysis, just import the data manipulized somewhere else into the Jamobi, okay? <coughs> so uh, let's let's uh, move forward. Ah, another thing, so so it, it indicates the measure type as IDs, which it's nothing. I, I, I usually change change uh, when when you see data uh, data, I change it to nominal, okay? So we can change this, and also we can change this data to nominal. Okay, so automatically you see that the symbol changes to the nominal. Nominal is better than than nothing here, for example. Okay, so uh, what we were saying is that we want to compute the variable MSM and the variable MSM. Uh, for one, we, we were saying that uh, we need our code book. Remember that this variable, uh, it has to be uh, constructed based <clears throat> on the options of the variable gender and the, um, and the variable um, uh, variables with men, uh, this and, and with men trans, right? So uh, we go here and we have to compute uh, a new variable. Okay. So I'm put here. Compute. So the new variable, for example, I will I will start with variable men. And these you put in the form formula that the gender has to be one or the no the one because if you go into the code book. Uh, one is uh, man, this, and also uh, four, which is um, trans man. Okay, so we have to put gender equals one or gender equals four. So, okay, so if you see, Automatically, when I created this new variable, you can you can see that automatically, the the variable man was append into the into the into the data set, and the results of the conditions of the logical condition is are, are here. Okay, in this case, so truth would be either uh, this man or trans man, and also we want to construct another another uh, variable which call which will we call uh, sorry um how are we saying this <laughs> um sex with men indicating indicating whether they report sexual relation with cisgender or transgender so we have to to put here uh, sex with men and what is the condition here the condition is that uh, with men should be equals to one or uh, with sorry with it's this i have to see with men cis with men trans with men this equals one or with men trans equals one. Yeah, George, I just wanted to comment that maybe it's easier for, if you don't know the name of the variable, et cetera, clicking on the function uh, button appears also the, the, the variable. So you can just click on the, maybe it's easier for, to look at the or, name of the variable or. Okay, yes. Exactly. This is what you mean, no? Yes, yes, exactly. With men this, with men trans. Okay. 
it's an, okay. it's another way to, to write it. Sorry, but I... Uh... With men. Yes. Equals one. Sorry, I, I don't know what I did now. And please with men friends. I sorry because I, I am so um Okay, so we have the second variable added. And at the end, we have, no, we will, we will compute the last variable, which is MSM, right? That it's in, in this case, we want that the both uh, men and uh, sex with men should be one, right? So MSM, you can you uh, this new variable would be the men equals one and sex with men equal equals one. Okay, and automa you have automatically settled the uh, variables here. Okay, uh, now that we have our variables here, uh, the, the next point is, is there any association between MSM and having taken an HIV test? So uh, the variable uh, of HIV test, it's called HIV test performed, which is one is yes and two is no. So if we want to uh, evaluate whether there is an association, remember that I uh, I explained the uh, the 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 procedure of of computing uh, contingency tables, right? So here we when we want to uh, do any statistical analysis or any analysis, we go to the analysis, and here we can go to the button frequencies. And in the button frequencies, you have the option of contingency tables of two independent samples, because what we want to see if um, there is an association between two, two independent groups, the groups, the group of yes, MSM or no MSM with respect to the HIV test. Okay, so if we click here, <coughs> you, you, you see this, the, um, uh, the window, and you have to select what you want to put uh, in the rows and what you want to put in the columns. And um, as you as you see here, uh, uh, a contingency table it's a table with this structure. So now we have to fill in the values of of you no know, the cells or um, uh, the cell values of this contingency table. So we have the MSM. We can put it into the rows. And we and we have the um, the HIV test performed that we can put it into the columns. Okay, and if you do not do anything else, you will just see the uh, a cross a contingency table with uh, each cell indicating the counts that we see in, in the specific cell. So here would be a, eighteen. Uh, persons, clients that have not taken 
in the HIV tests and that uh, are not MSMs. Okay, so uh, if we just uh, take in consideration the observations, we cannot uh, talk about associations um, between the two variables. So what is it is important is to include relative values. In this case, as I told you before, we can include the uh, percentages uh, of rows. So automatically, you see here the percentages of rows. For example, within the group of uh, non-MSMs, there is a higher percentage of non-HIV tests. Within the group of yes, MSMs, there is a higher percentage of non-tests. So that's what I was saying before, that just uh, seeing whether there is a higher no, but a percentage in one cell in compared to the other one, it does not tell you anything about the association. What it tells you about the association is to compare these percentages um, over the marginals, which is formally called these percentages in statistics, but we can uh, call them as totals here as we see here. So what do we see here? That independently of uh, the fact of, of uh, we have a, uh, MSM or non-MSM client, and uh, they are 20.9% uh, of the data set of clients that have not taken the test, and 79.1% that does have the, sorry, one is yes and two is no. So 20% uh, of yes and 29% of no. What do we see here? Do we see here that if we take, if we, if we see this number, this number, this 23.7% is higher than the marginal zoom. So meaning that there is a tendency in this data set or there is an association of being MSM and have taken a, uh, a test here, okay? Because this number is higher than this. In the case of non-MSM, what do we see here? This value is lower than this one. So, this group is uh, the group that would not be associated associated to the fact that there is uh, they have gone to the to the site to take an HIV test or to in that specific visit. Okay, so this would be the solution. Actually, we could we could also. Uh, Produce the plot, the bar plot. See, and if we do the percentages, no, if we compute the, the percentages bar, by rows, we do see this see the same, no, that that um, that the percentages of uh, HIV tests are higher in the population of MSMs in contrast to the population of non-MSMs. Okay, and this would be the, how would you would perform the, the analysis and how this program works and also some uh, statistical analysis. Uh, is there any questions or? If not, um, I may um, explain you one last thing of this uh, uh, program that it could be also uh, useful for those of you that would are interested in moving forward to the analysis. So, um, uh, as I told you at the beginning of the of the session, uh, that um, the Jamovi uh, has the option to include uh, modules. So it's a modular uh, program, meaning that you can add additional functionality functionality through modules. And these modules uh, can be uh, installed via via the modules options button that you have here on the top of the screen. And some popular modules, for example, include advanced statistical tests. You can also do machine learning and, and 
many other things. So the, it's you can in, incorporate more advanced options that uh, the program does not include, okay? And another option module that it is very interesting uh, is the R editor module. So as I told you before, uh, I, we, we saw from, uh, from uh, this questionnaire that, that was circulated that most of, of you do not use the R, but someone did. So uh, uh, you can include this module. So the R editor allows users to write and run R code directly within the Jamovi environment. So um, this integration is particularly valuable because it combines user-friendly interface of Jamovi with the powerful statistical capabilities of R. So you can, with the R editor, you can perform complex analysis that may, may not be available uh, and well, utilize a vast, a vast variety of R packages and functions that are not included in here. And also write custom scripts and you can interact. So how do we install uh, modules? It's, if we click into the modules, we go to the Jomobi library and you will end up into this, um, uh, this, this window here. <coughs> And for example, I have already installed the uh, R editor, uh, R Jamovi editor. So you see it here, but maybe if you do it yourself, you will not, you will not see it. But uh, you can you can type into the search box the module name. So you could type here RJ space editor, and you will find it. And just by double clicking, you will install the module here. So um, if if you do this, you will see you will see the uh, another uh, the bottom of our editor. This is I can show you into the Jamovi. Uh, I I already installed. So so sorry. If I put this, I don't see the whole screen. Um, uh, yes. Did you direct two questions in the chat? Ah, okay. Is the case that I read them now or later? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Because I'm, I'm here. I'm going a little bit step forward, being for more advanced things. So, so we can, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first question is: Is it possible to rename the answer of the variable, for example, variable MSM one equals yes and zero equals no? Yes, sure, exactly. Uh, I didn't go through this, but. Uh, here we have the variables. So we we, we want to change you know, the, the labels of MSM. So um, here, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, for example, You, as you see, sorry, I don't see this in, in MSM. I, I've never done this, but exactly. Uh, no. Sorry, I don't see this, how you, well, how you, how you change this here, sorry. Usually when you edit, I, I, I've never changed the labels because I use the code book always. And uh, I, what I see is that with the variables that you that you compute, you cannot change the labels. So you can change the labels with the variables that are already, you see, that you, you see here. So I will inspect and if I find a, an answer to this because I've never done this before, <laughs> change the labels of a computed variable, I will tell you. Sorry. I thought you could do it like like the other ones. Yeah, uh, and the second question is: If we integrate R, are the graphs going to be like those shown in the G G lot in R or like the 
Sorry, sorry, I didn't understand. We integrate our are the graphs going to be like the the shown in ggplot in R or like Jamovi? Uh, I mean, you can you can uh, once you have R there, you can install whatever library. So you if 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 you install the ggplot library, you can you can end up with uh, ggplots in within Jamovi as well. So you, whatever you do with 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 R like classic R, you can do, you can integrate this in, in here. Just, you have to install packages as, as, as you would do in the context of, of R. Yes. And Georgia, this part of the rename the variables, well, the, the values of the variables, uh, is it is explained in the, in the manual? So it is explained to rename the variables, but the variables that we have not con yeah. computed. Yeah. So, so, so you, as I show you, um, uh, when you compute here, uh, sorry, when when you go into the variables and you click into a variable, see that you that the variables that you have computed, you see a dot next to it, right? And the variables that were already here, it's uh, oh, this one. Are variables that already existed in the data set and you can change labels here. So we have to find that I'm sorry, but I cannot tell you now, but I, I will I, I I will make a search on how to do it with variables that are not computed because you don't have the option here. Okay, thanks. And there was also a suggestion in the chat, uh, yes. various messages uh, of treasures that saying that if you can do a slide on the interpretation of a box plot and share it uh, with the members, that could be useful. Okay, so so you mean typing the uh... yes explanation yes. that you've done on how explanation? <laughs> sure, sure. So I will include it into the into the the slides and then share the updated version if okay, you want. To. And also, uh, I would I I think I run out of time already. And this part of of um, of the R, uh, there is a little a little explanation in the in the slides. But maybe I. Uh, I I can also um, put some explanation there for those that are interested in doing ggplots and all these things, interacting with your mobile. 